uh, I don't think anybody remembers the truth, the facts. I mean, you remember impressions, and and uh, uh, I, I don't think that you can remember truthfully how things happen. You can you can be kind of close to it. I don't know why it's important anyway. We are being truthful, but it's not the truth that we're telling. I don't think I ever shoot a scene that I don't think I'm going to use. If I think there's something dicey about the scene or it isn't going to really work, I don't shoot it. Um, if I shoot a scene, I, it's my opinion that it's going to work. Now after, then I'm going to need it. After it's shot, uh, I might say, you know, I don't need this. This is redundant. We're telling this particular thing twice. So. Uh, uh, but it's like building up a, a, a building from a blueprint. The script is the blueprint. And you start building the building and you get your framework up and you look around and you say, huh, uh, this bathroom isn't going to be big enough. Let's make that door wider and open this up and put, and can, do we have room to extend there? And, and, and the architect or the builder will say, well, if we do it there, we're going to have to pull stuff back from here. And I said, well, let's do it. So we're, we're adjusting this as we build it. The beginning piece, the opening section, which is uh, him examining the, the, that lady, the first patient, uh, which sets up, uh, uh, b before the titles, it kind of sets up like, you know, that what, what we're in an examining room and there's a, here's a, uh, a gynecologist is examining an, an older woman, uh, and and then you see her nervousness. And also, we got out a lot of information in there about Dr. T, about his sister-in-law, and about his wife and his children. And uh, we got some of the names laid on us. That and uh, and at the end of that sequence, we just disclose Dr. Uh, Richard Gere, uh, down there with his speculum, you know, between this lady's legs. And that's the introduction to saying, this is Richard Gere in this kind of film. And then we went into our title sequence, which was in the office, and all the, the women, uh, and it starts to build, and it builds until it, it gets into a, a real cacophony of uh, female, you know, it's like a hen party. Um, and then we go and now we've established the gynecological, the gynecological office. Uh, we've established that Gear is this, this doctor. And generally what our theme is, it's a, it's a, it's a um, uh, an overture really. We do, we did, and, and do, as a practice, uh, change constantly during the thing. The writer is usually uh, on the uh, set with me, is there most of the time, and uh, we'll come along and say, hey, wouldn't it be good if we did this sort of thing? Or this didn't seem to tell what we wanted to tell. Maybe we should drop that and do it in another way. Because to me, this whole this, uh, uh, story script, whatever we want to call it, is uh, once it's peopled with three-dimensional actors and they're playing these parts, much more, uh, it's focused, it becomes more focused. And as it becomes more focused, you find out that, eh, we, we, <clears throat> I don't think this is quite clear, I think we need another scene here, or we don't need another scene here. The audience has got this. I know it's going to end up, we shoot a scene, it's in the script, maybe. We're, I know it's going to end up on the cutting room floor. So let's, let's just cut that and move on. Uh, you know, we'll need the time later. There's a, the film itself kind of dictates its own growth. In other words, where where it's shot, what the people are like, what the uh, the sets, the props, uh, uh, 
costumes, all of that stuff. Look very. It has to be consistent. Yeah, I don't know that anybody ever specifically says this should be this, but I know that um, one we we this film was set in a community, an existing community, Dallas. That's a place that really is there. We want to use. Uh, we go there for a long time before we start shooting. We get in, kind of immersed in the community until we kind of know what what the idiosyncrasies of the of that community are. Uh, Dallas, as opposed to Denver, or as opposed to New York, or as opposed to uh, Butte, Montana, or whatever. And and the production designer. Uh, is is taking all this information in at the same time I am and the rest of us are and we come up with a, a design for an office uh, which was in this case a set we built this in on a stage this the doctor's office and all the his room any rooms we built uh, uh, Helen Hunt's apartment uh, on the stage because I wanted it to to be, I want to be able to shoot it in one long sequence, and when you get into a practical location, it's very hard to do that. So you 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 have you try to take control of everything when you can. When you can't, then you have to say, I can't control this, so I have to do deal with what's there. So I have to change all my other elements. We have to make everything look the way everything looks. I mean that it belongs there. So we don't, uh, we shoot a scene uh, amongst the real people and the real buildings and automobiles and events and whatever is happening. Then we come into a, a, a scene that we can control every element of. But we don't suddenly revert back to and say, oh, we'll make this very uh, pastel -y and it'll be very, uh, it, it'll be very dramatic with the color and the, the design and all that, because it's going to look like it comes from another film. So we have to say, ah, this is what we can do. This, these are the things we can't control. So we have to make that the way our film is going to look. So we have to put the same thing in the scenes we do control. In the case of Dr. T, uh, we were, we controlled basically almost every scene where there were a lot of people. In the mall scene, where I suppose there were the most people, uh, that was, uh, we shot that at midnight. We started at, when, when those stores closed, seven o'clock, and we shot all night for three nights in a row. So everybody in that mall belonged to us. So Donna Granada was able to uh, dress every woman that was in there. We didn't. There were no. We didn't call up an extra call and say, uh, "We want 200, 300 people to show up. Uh, we'll give them lunch and uh, and pay them." Uh, they had passed through our wardrobe department. We told them kind of what to wear. But then they'd show up, and and Donna would sit there, and some lady comes in with a purple scarf on. She'd take that off and put on a something that that fit the whole plan. Steve Altman, who is the production designer on this, his problem is is to make all this what we're taking as real things that exist there, and then what we're building, and all of the elements of the of the look of the film. Same with the costume designer, uh, which is all in his department. He's a production designer, and so that includes uh, wardrobe and art direction of all kinds and then it, it you see oh what what we have to do to keep a uh, a continuity to this so that we know this film was of this place so it becomes uh, de art uh, direction in other words you don't try to make it different because it, then it will look different. You don't want it to be different. Well, Lyle uh, is a Texan, of course, and uh, Lyle Lovett, and 
he acted in several films of mine, uh, and uh, at one time I was I had been penciled in as one of the golfing guys, and then I thought, God, I love uh, Lyle should do the score for this, and Lyle had never done a score, so I called him up. I said, You can't be in my film because you're either going to have to play with the children or play with the grown-ups. And if you're going to play with the grown-ups, that means you're going to have to write the score. Well, he said, I've never written a score. I said, well, this will be a good time to start. And he did a great job. So he, he's, God, he's a good musician. It's so expensive to make these films that if you don't have success, you suddenly are going to be in a position where you can't make them. I mean, nobody's going to, you're not going to be able to raise the money to make the films. Well, I, I mean, that would be a disaster in my life because that's all I do. It's all I care to do. It's all I desire. It's where I get my kicks. It's, uh, it's, it's where I exercise my mind. It's, uh, and uh, to suddenly find out that you can't do that anymore because people don't like what you do is, can be quite dreadful. So I'm very uh, savvy to what the uh, critics say. But I'm pretty sure that two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, this picture will keep, will find its place. Because right now, and it's doing well, it's done well for us, but, but, but it's, it's, it's been put on, on, its, uh, on its tray in, by value of all the other things that are out there. It is not, never dealt with by itself. Nobody can just look at this film and say, oh, here's this piece of work. They have to look at it well. Uh, first, in, they have to compare me to me. And invariably, and no matter what I do, they're going to say, oh, this is, uh, this is great, but it's, it's not Nashville, or it's not MASH. Well, MASH was 30 years ago, and Nashville was 25 years ago, and these people haven't seen that fil those films. It's something that stays in their mind. They have adapted the material that they saw in that film into their own brain and into their own life, and now so in, in remembering it, they remembered how it affected them at what stage of their life they were in at the time that they made it, that they, they saw the film. Uh, and they carry that through the rest of their lives. So that was a, if that was a big shock to them or a, 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 a Pivoting, pivotal place where they say, uh, oh, wow, this just changed my life. That's what stays in their mind, not the movie. And then they can see the movie again, but they're still going to look at it in the way they thought they looked at it the first time. So most of any work like this that is really good, that is, is solid, will never have that effect on its first time out. It can, that can only be in, in accumulation. Because the first time out, first place people aren't seeing the film. They're, 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 they're looking at the whodunit factor. They're saying, what happened? Oh, he's going to, oh, did she do it? My God, she's a lesbian. Ooh, can he do that? <laughs> and all of that comes up. Then they finish the picture. To really see that film, They've got to go back and see it again when they know all of these uh, little surprises, these little plot points. They know the butler did it. And then they can go through and they see it again and they can deal with the actual detailing of the art of the film, of, of, of what the painting is, what the mural is. Everybody's unique. Every artist is unique and they do things in the way they do them. It doesn't mean that's the way everybody should do them. Other people do them differently. Uh, uh, I can only account for uh, what I seem to do and uh, the reasons I do it.